Have you considered building your own house? By being your own general contractor, you can save between 15 to 25 percent of the cost of your home. So that means if you're building a $300,000 home, that's up to $75,000. This spreadsheet helps you estimate the cost of building your home and developing a schedule for completion. Finally, there is a step-by-step -step checklist of tasks to complete to build your home. And all those are based on the inputs that you put in for the cost and schedule. We'll get into that. Let's start with the cost. This is a summary for each category. When you fill in the details down here, and we'll go through this a little bit, but when you fill in those details, this table will update with the new summary of the costs. And the next tab will present that same data that, that's in that summary, just in pie, uh, pie chart format. Okay, let's go through the details a little bit. Anytime you see an orange cell, that's an input. And it's based on the level of, level of confidence you have in the figures you're using, which you select right here. So if, it's not, if, if your costs are based on estimates, uh, what, you're, you know, what you're estimating, then you select this. Um, if you have firm costs from some contractors, you can use that. <clears throat> a bid is a little more, it's, it's even more firm because they're, you know, they're putting that in writing. And, um, and and then actual costs. That's you know after you've built it, and you're you're just putting in the the actuals there to see the difference uh, between what you had bid uh, the the bid cost and the actual, or, or actually between the actual and estimated, whatever you want to see the difference between there. Um, and if you s select a different one, you'll see how the orange cells update. So it just lets you know, based on which, which level of confidence you're using, which uh, cells need to be filled in. And, uh, but let's go back, let's, 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 start, let's start with the estimate, estimated here. So as you go down here, if you select lump sum, then the, the, the choices are lump sum and detailed. If you select lump sum, you just put in the, the value here that you think it's going to be. Um, and that makes sense a lot of time for a lot of calls, like, you know, like, for example, right here, your, your permits. You know, you have a good idea of what those are going to cost, and it doesn't really make sense to, to do a detailed analysis on there. But, uh, but take, for example, say your interest. If you were to select detailed for that, uh, we have this built in here where you put in your APR your annual percentage rate and this is going to estimate what your interest is going to be based on the construction draw schedule and if you don't know what that is um, we'll get into it in a little bit in a few minutes but uh, basically it's just the cash that you receive from the bank when you need it during construction because they don't give you all the cash up front you, you, you only draw it when you need it so whenever the foundation guy's done you draw it at that point for him and you pay him and then you start paying interest on that amount that you drew. And then, you know, uh, whenever the framing guy is, do is done, and actually in phases, you pay him in phases. But anyway, whenever he's done, you pay him, you draw it, you, you make a draw from the bank at that point. And then you start paying interest on that money that you draw, and you pay that framing guy. Um, so anyway, it, it takes uh, the, the, those things into account, and it will estimate what, how much interest you will have paid at the end of building your home. So that's that. We'll we'll leave that there. Um, okay, let's let's just go down and, and look at say the uh, the foundation here. And uh, as you can see, you've you've got some flexibility here in how you can estimate. There's many different types of foundations and and many different ways that you can estimate it. Um, uh, so you know, say if you get a if you get a soil treatment, <coughs> uh, a soil testing, you know, you, you can add whatever those costs, and however many you're going to have performed, um, however many soil treatments you're going to have if required, and you can update these values as needed, and uh, 
you know, say your concrete slab materials, you know, and there's flexibility in these units. Um, say that you've got 3,500 square feet of concrete slab and the, the, the people that you work with like to quote you a price in square feet. You can use those units for square feet and, and then just put in the value that they charge per square foot. And, uh, but there is flexibility because like, say for example, roofing, a lot of roofers like to quote in squares which are uh, units of 100 square feet. So if you if you did that, you know you could, for, I'll just say you could you could use squares and, and just update you know plug in this number whatever whatever it is, you know and and so there's some flexibility in 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 in, in that, but uh, so you you could get a quote in squares or if you and I know this is the foundation. Uh, line item here so you know you would do that down in the roofing area so it's just I'm giving an example here of the flexibility of these units but um, but some some roofers might want to quote your price in, in square feet and then you could you could update these units and whatever makes sense for the moment for whatever uh, estimate you're doing and then put in the price here these will update and you'll do that for every category of construction and whenever you've you've gone through all the categories shown here, then <coughs> excuse me, your your price your your summary here will automatically update. And uh, and so once you've done cost, then you move over to schedule. What you do is you, you put your start date here, and for for each each con each construction task is listed here. So you go through each task and you put in the duration for your project in in this column here in column E, and um, and then you um, whenever you do that, you can come over here and these uh, will update accordingly. And uh, so let, let, let's let, let's do an example here. So say you change this to, to say this took you seven days. All right, you'll see that this got longer. Did you notice that? Okay, now, but what you have to do is you have to hit this refresh arrows button to get the arrows to update. Okay, so they'll it'll draw the arrows and basically it's drawing the the predecessors uh, based on the input that's in this step here. So, um, say, you know, lot costs is depending on the survey. So whenever you come over here to lot costs, you can see that there's an arrow coming from the survey, meaning that uh, it's depending on that to be completed before that starts. So you'll notice that if your survey goes out longer um, or shorter, then your lot cost is, is not going to uh, start until that's complete. So let, let's uh, uh, let's just you know make another example here so you can see how it pushes it out. So you see the survey, and again, whenever you update those num those uh, numbers, you do have to hit the refresh button here for the arrows to update. But uh, you can see how it pushed it out, and it pushed all these things out as well and um, the red arrows some are red and that's based on if it's a critical step or not and anything that's highlighted this blue here is considered a critical step and um, so so those are shown in red and you can update these uh, controlling steps you know these these dependents here if, if you think it's necessary um, and then the types, if you're familiar with some project controls, uh, terminology, so FS means finish to start, um, SS means start to start, and this FF means finish to finish. So depending on what type of relationship it is, that will determine, um, you know, like, for example, if, if you had selected, you know, start to start, 
then what that would mean is that this activity 9 would not be able to start until the lot cost started and um, uh, but uh, whenever you have finished to start that just means that that activity has to finish before this one can start um, so then you can put in a lag time if you want to negative is a, is a lead time um, you can put in other predecessors uh, the spreadsheet is is not going to update based on these other predecessors. It's only going to update based on the controlling predecessor. Um, what I'm calling controlling step, but it's, it's just the predecessor here. So uh, then you can put in notes if you want. Um, I did not make these orange. Um, just thinking that, you know, I allow you to, to change those cells if you need to for your if you think it's necessary for your project but um, but these are the main things to update here are the durations and uh, like I said once you do um, the dates and everything will update you you might notice the downstream dates that you see here will update as necessary um, so say for example that um, you know just say your permits took a long time and these activities are dependent on this so say that instead of two weeks oh oh no it, it ended up taking three weeks so you can see how these dates will then update based on 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 those inputs and so forth and so on down the line everything will update um, as the things that it is depending on are updated um, and once you have everything the the way that it looks like it needs to be as far as the durations, um, then uh, uh, you want to go ahead and hit the uh, the refresh arrows button, and um, it'll update these arrows and uh, show you the relationships and the schedule of when those activities will be performed then you move to the next tab and what this gives you is a step-by-step -step checklist of things that need to be completed in order to build your home um, and no input is required on this tab all the information on this tab is being pulled from the inputs that you made on the cost tab and on the schedule tab so these dates right here are coming from uh, this tab the sorry th this tab the schedule tab here it's it's all coming from from that information all these dates you know whenever it talks about the foundation um, it's you you know that's the schedule to complete these activities in order to meet your schedule these have to be done between March 28th and April 11th and you know so on and so forth framing the the all the activities listed here this all has to be between April 11th and April 25th and um, so all of that all of this schedule information is coming from that this cost information is all coming from the inf from the the inputs that you made on the cost tab here and what these are are these are payment points uh, expected payment points so um, you know, say, uh, for example, like you're, you're having your lot surveyed and building lines and everything. Well, you're going to have to pay the surveyor. And, uh, and, and approximately this is the date here, March 4th. Um, and this is what you would pay him on that day. And then, you know, then you would have the compaction test and soil testing and all that stuff on March 8th. And that's, this is when you would pay this guy this amount. And this table is all for labor, and this table right here is all for material. So you know, like if you're gonna pay, like say the uh, the building supply store for a sign, um, or or for you know foundation material, doors, um, that kind of a thing. Uh, and when you add the total cost of uh, all of these 
these two tables, labor and material, together, when you add them all up, which which this is down here at the bottom, a total of labor and material together, these numbers so match what you have on the call. So you know this is 309, 244, and that's where you're matching here, 309, 244, under the estimated part there. And um, Uh, then what you see here is basically the cash draw schedule that you would have from the bank or, or whatever, wherever the money's coming from. Uh, you see here is the labor in blue, um, and this in red is, is the material that's being bought and when, and this is the total. So that's how much you're spending and, and when. And by the way, the, what you saw in the interest earlier, um, this is what it's based on. It's 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 pulling, you know, these draws and and coming up with an interest based on on this information. Um, uh, some other notes on here. So the blue means that this is where a subcontractor needs to be hired. The purple means this is where you need to buy material. And the light, the light green, it means that this is an unofficial uh, inspection. So you know you'd want to go check out and see how the plumbing is going, uh, or you know measure plumbing locations, or, or check the foundation, or whatever. It, it's it's just unofficial things that you want to check, make sh and make sure that uh, your subcontractors are performing work up to par. And the dark green is um, uh, an official uh, uh, inspection by the city and those do need to each of these things these official inspections do need need to be confirmed with the jurisdiction that you're in because um, those those do vary slightly they can vary uh, from jurisdiction to jurisdiction so um, Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please click subscribe to receive more videos. Um, if you'd like to purchase this spreadsheet, please see the comment section.